Howdy everybody in YouTube land. What we have in front of us today is a Kenwood Exelon series X502-1. Now, I'm back on the car audio kick again because um, I am having issues at work and I need a supplemental source of income so I need to be able to make money. And I'm starting to take outside repairs again for just a little bit of extra side cash. But anyways, back on topic here. Um, I've never worked on one of these. I've never seen one of these before. So this one's a bit newer. It looks very cheap. It looks like a piece of shit. And it's probably not worth putting any money into. But hey, you don't know until we try, right? So as always, when it comes to these amplifiers. Let's see. Indonesia. I don't know when it was made, like 2014 potentially. I don't know. As with all of these, I need to make sure that a, we take it apart and take a look and inspect the inside before we even attempt to power something like this up because there's a lot of high currents involved in these amplifiers. So you got to think a small package like this can pack a thousand watts and it's due to the efficiency of the amplifier design being class D and all. But the point is it contains pretty significant voltages and it contains pretty significant amount of current. So it's going to pack a punch. So if this thing has got an internal short and I power it up, it's going to make a pretty, pretty violent scene. I'll just say that, or at least it can anyways. Oh boy, this is, um, this is cheap. This is bad. Right away, we already see problem number one. There's a hole blown right into those transistors. But yes, that's exactly what it is. Um, 2014. So this was, this would have been brand new right as I was exiting the business. Meyer 2092, very, very classic design. I don't know if it's in parallel or if it's in push-pull configuration because there's one amplifier and there's two amplifier, the other amplifier. So, yes. Cost reduced. And they're not very good at thermal transfer either. So, but, yeah, it's, uh, let's see, 4N0609. Inner, it may it might, looks like it's made by Intersil, but yeah, that is completely gone, totally, totally gone. Looks like it's 68 ohms or 6.8 ohms or something. Uh, gate fat or gate resistors, and they're blown apart. Um, which means the driver transistors that run that is also going to be bad. So, yeah, that's not good. And that looks like the only power supply section. Z, there's just the rectifier diodes. And this thing, even though it's capable of doing a thousand watts, I just don't see it because it doesn't have adequate heat dissipation. But unless they got the amplifier efficiency way, way up. Anyways, let's see if we have a bad output transistor here. This is very difficult to do one handed. I need a tripod, but I got no money. Nope, that's not blown. That's not blown. That's not blown. So the output stage is fine. It's the power supply stage just didn't hold. Which honestly, I'm not entirely surprised because there's no gate voltage regulation so what happens is the alternator is bouncing around right or if your ground is bad or something like that the voltage sags on the amplifier during peak output power periods when it does is it, it causes the voltage on the gate to drop significantly because the input voltage drops right and when it does the rds on or the resistance between drain and source across the channel will rise exponentially based on the graph of the data sheet 
Um, and when it does, it creates a bigger and bigger resistor in here. And when you have a thousand watts of current flowing through that, guess what happens? It nukes the transistor. So that is likely what happened here. Um, so we're going to need four transistors and we're going to need four resistors. And I have to find the driver transistors, which are here. There's one there. And if we follow the circuitry for the other one. Yeah, there they are. So these, these two, there's a diode for dead time control. There's a transistor, there's a diode and a transistor. So these two are working together to drive the, the MOSFET. So I don't have the schematic to this thing. I'm sure I could probably get it, but I'm going to see what I can do without necessarily grabbing it so let me get in here and do some more testing and get me a components list together so i know what we have to order all right so we now have the parts that we need to do this particular job so what we have to change out is we got to change all four of these of course because they're you know completely physically blown but we also have to change those four gate resistors and we have to change the two driver transistors, which are 2SA 1577s. One of them is right here. And the other one is way back in there, hiding away. You can kind of see, there it is. So Q606 has to be replaced and Q605 has to be replaced. That should bring this thing back on. Now we don't know if there's any other faults yet. And I found, for some reason, I don't know what it is, but I found V-style amplifiers that use this topology extremely difficult to troubleshoot because I've got a Kicker KX600 and I have another, I don't know if it's another Kicker or Rockford or one of those. Um, it's got the same, similar design topology and I'm having trouble trying to troubleshoot it. So yes, anyways, it looks like this is 2000. 14 so it's a more modern amp but anyway so uh we gotta get not only do we have to get the uh soldering iron all nice and hot but we also have to get the heat gun out to actually work on that all right so all the new components are soldered into place got the new transistors in new resistors and there we go I don't have a schematic for this unit, so I just got to hope that, um, yeah, just got to hope that everything works. So, it's still quite warm, but anyways, okay, so here we go, nothing, let's see, what's my pin out here, ground is in the middle, this is how I always do it the right way to do it I don't know but that's how I do it well that blade is wide so it's not wanting to there we go that's in there now power on well it's not drawing any current so we don't have any parasitics in the power supply stage which is my fear okay does it fire up? It's running. It's idling. And there we go. I don't see any LEDs. So I think it's actually on the bottom. Yeah, it is. Alright. We're running. Well... At this point, I'm going to get my uh, RCA cables hooked up and get a speaker plugged in and see if I get any sound at all. And if I do, I'm putting it back into the enclosure. Seems to work fine. Boost. all right well 
thank God the uh, there's no issues in the output stage because these are incredibly difficult to troubleshoot sometimes. Well, I don't know about this particular model. This is the first one of these I've ever seen, but um, yeah, everything's working fine. Not getting excessively warm. We're good. There's my stack of bad ones. Just kind of shoved on top of there. And there's all my bad resistors. And a couple of dead transistors. It's kind of a neat failure mode. Bang! Alright, so we are good. I like it when they're relatively simple. I didn't have to do anything crazy with this thing. Now, I'm not one of those guys where I'm just going to put dummy loads on it, signal generators, all that stuff, like an amp dyno. I don't do that kind of thing. I just do basic testing. Now, the person I'm doing these for is a professional car audio installer, and he does have all of that gear. So when he gets these back, he's going to bench them with the dyno and whatever and make sure they're up to snuff and then kick it on down the road. I'm just doing the repair, so just in case anyone's wondering. But yes, everything's good, so we can finally seal the deal on this one. And that is it. That is one X502-1 repaired and fully operational.